Hi folks, Chuck McKay, and I'm here at the high school with Marketing Matt Shea. And the reason I say marketing is because there's a lot of things going on, but I've got some great young men with me today. I have Ryan and Alton from the DECA organization, and we want to talk a little bit about DECA and the role that they're playing in various activities in our community, including tomorrow night. There's a turkey dinner here for Harvest House. So, Ryan, tell us a little bit about this because you're a veteran. Harvest House is a food bank organization in New Jersey that partners with the high school to provide a, a meal for the needy. And uh, tomorrow night from 4 to 7, they will be providing food for the families of this town. It's $25 for a family of four. You get a, a pretty healthy meal for your family. And there's also live music provided. And the DECA students will volunteer to help serve and orchestrate the entire event. And you've done this before. What's it like that night? Is it a real community feel? It really is. We get a good showing every year, and it's one of the main events that DECA does throughout the year. Some of the wonderful things that uh, Vernon has for its community. Okay, Alton, tell us a little bit about the DECA organization and things that we get involved with. Uh, DECA is a business club that was founded by our marketing teachers a, no a number of years back, and we specialize in basically preparing students for the workforce via role plays and business events. So most of the students take Mrs. Flannery's marketing class, I assume? Yes. Okay, and what do you learn in those classes? What are you learning about the, the whole marketing program? We learn how, how companies display products, how they sell them, and how they ultimately promote products and ways to increase revenue for businesses. Exactly, sort of like the way we're promoting this turkey dinner. But the idea with DECA is it is a service organization and they have wonderful leaders uh, and wonderful teachers who are doing great things in our community. So we'll take a look at some of the great things that are happening this week and then we'll talk to you about our superintendent spotlight. So let's see what's happening uh, this October 19th and see what's happened in the past week. There's a great picture here of Mr. Romano's tech and robotics class. Students working in project-based education and uh, building their own websites. Uh, I was in this classroom the other week and it was just great to see all the great work that the students are doing. Mr. Logie's class uh, went to Raritan College, Raritan Community College this past week and uh, they met with Marguerite uh, Feldman, a Holocaust survivor. And the students, of course, gained a lot from this trip with Mr. Logie. Uh, a wonderful eye-opening experience about what some people have lived through in their lifetime. On this same trip, Mr. Logaitis was with the students and, and they uh, talked to a Rwandan uh, survivor, Daniel Trust. And again, um, our students learned a great deal uh, from their experience here at Raritan Community College. And this is them in the auditorium before uh, the speech. Senior night, senior night for all of our sports. Uh, thank you to all the coaches. Thank you to all the parents for their involvement throughout their entire child's uh, career here at the high school. And here are the seniors from the girls' soccer team. The girls' soccer team is doing remarkably well. They're having a wonderful season. And this is a beautiful picture of all of our seniors on, uh, on the team. Looks like some stormy clouds were heading out that night. But uh, again, it's been all nothing but sunshine for this great soccer team. Here are Vernon teachers, and they were at Ed Camp uh, over at High Point High School. And uh, obviously, they're having a great time uh, with professional development. Walnut Ridge had uh, two great experiences this week. Uh, Mr. Piccarillo was talking about safety uh, with his students and of course they had the fire truck there uh, talking about fire safety and Ms. Rebecca Dorney uh, of the coalition was talking to the parents about developmental assets and uh, the workshop uh, was all about what our students need to succeed in the world. And she talks about the 40 developmental assets, things that uh, cause our students to be strong uh, in the world that they live in, which includes parents, social groups, uh, the idea of having confidence, uh, being involved in things. So it was a great experience for our pre-K parents. Uh, and of course, Mr. Piccarello once again, finds himself in a strange photo. Ms. Denise Dougherty uh, is raising trout. 
So uh, in the kindergarten, the first grade students came in to, develop, to see the development of young trout. So it starts with 285 eggs, and they were delivered uh, about 10 days ago. So the students get to see uh, the fish hatch, uh, and then they raise them, and then they release them. So the release date will be sometime in the spring. And this is one of our first grade students looking through a microscope, and this is what the eggs look like uh, uh, before, of course, they put them in the tank. Great experience for everybody. Thank you, Ms. Doherty. Uh, this is Mark Bray's class, uh, and he had Jim McAllister, who is a Salem witchcraft trial historian. Uh, Jim gives tours uh, at Salem at night, and Mark in the past has had trips up to Salem and Boston. Uh, in which Mr. McAllister would run the tour. Uh, this year, um, he had Jim talk to all of his students in the upper library about uh, some of the things that went on in Salem uh, during the witchcraft trials. So that's them Skyping with uh, Jim McAllister. Our two captains, Shane Brennan and Jack Boken, are the captains for the hockey team, and they had a great night um, at the Rock. Uh, as all the captains from the high school teams in New Jersey were honored. So that's the picture on the right. And uh, our, our captains had a great time. So congratulations to them on that great event. Senior night uh, with the parents. So there's our seniors uh, uh, on the left with the girls soccer team. And there's our boys on the right. Another beautiful night, beautiful picture there of uh, the guys with their dads and moms, uh, varsity senior boys. So again, to the families of the boys soccer team, thank you very much for your dedication uh, to your students, uh, student athletes. Uh, we appreciate all that you have done for the program. Go Vernon. Uh, here's a great picture. <laughs> These are the kids in Walnut Ridge uh, with the fire truck. And of course, uh, the kids over in Cedar Mountain with the fire truck, it was safety week. Uh, on Columbus Day, we had a professional development. So our students had early dismissal and our teachers were working on curriculum. On the left, you see a picture of our mentor-mentee program. Uh, our new teachers are working with experienced veterans. So we have basically two veterans working with each um, new teacher. Uh, part, of them, uh, part of that group is the committee and then the other part is the individual mentor for the teachers. This is a best practice uh, that we have instituted in the past five years uh, in which new teachers are mentored by experienced teachers. And on the right, curriculum work uh, with language arts, uh, working on a readers and writers workshop in Lounsbury. Walnut Ridge has a new parents group. It's called RAP, uh, Walnut Ridge Assembly of Parents. Uh, and they have collected boxes and boxes of donations for needy families at the Samaritan Inn. And I just wanted to take this minute to thank all the parents at Walnut Ridge who are part of RAP for creating this group uh, and uh, doing great things for our society. Uh, you can't be a better example than someone who does this for the least among us. And it's a great model for our children as well. So it's Walnut Ridge taking care of their neighbors. In Lounsbury Hollow, they also are taking care of their neighbors. And the way they do it is they take the scare out of hunger with a scarecrow contest. Now, <laughs> usually there's two or three, but we've somehow broadened it to seven. There's now seven choices. Uh, all of them have crazy names um, uh, from Taylor uh, Scarecrow to Miss Sunny, Mrs. Sunny. And what the students do is they bring canned goods in and box goods. Uh, dry goods, and uh, they place it in the box of the scarecrow they like the best. And then at the end, that's how the votes are tallied, and they announce who um, was the most popular scarecrow. Just one more way of caring children and parents taking care of their neighbors. So thanks to the parents at Lounsbury Hollow for helping our students do this great thing. We just talked to the boys from DECA, and uh, here's some information on the Harvest House dinner. The dinner is tomorrow night, um, and it's held from 4 to 7. Tickets are $12 for adults, $8 for seniors and children, and a family of four, uh, as Ryan told you, can eat for $25. Please come out and support this, and again, this is to help local food banks uh, and the Harvest House. Okay. 
this Thursday night, October 25th, 5 through 10 p.m. at the high school. If you are the parent of a senior, we need you here. This is an opportunity for seniors and their parents to come to jam night. Bring all of your college information. We'll have the computers there if you need them, but the kids can bring their Chromebooks as well. And what we want to do on jam night is make sure by 10 o'clock at night that you can press send and your child will have applied to the colleges that they want to apply to. So a couple of things. You're going to have guidance counselors there. You're going to have teachers there. You're going to have administrators there to help you, help with the essays, help with any questions that you have about the FAFSA, help with any concerns that you have with the application process. But it is a unique opportunity to sit down, get this done, press send, and relieve that tension uh, from your family dynamics so that you can enjoy Halloween, you can enjoy Thanksgiving uh, and Christmas. The early date for applications is November 1st, so this is scheduled right now so that you can beat that deadline. So if you have a senior and the college applications are not done, this is your night. We can't wait to see you. It's in the gym at the high school. Uh, we want to introduce a new idea uh, that's happening this year with our new superintendent. So Karen Devino is going to have a super spot for you in which uh, she takes a look at one thing every week that Vernon can be proud of. So I'll turn it right over to Ms. Devino. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Karen Devino, and as many of you know, I'm the new superintendent of schools here in Vernon, New Jersey. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I'm up at the robotics lab at Vernon Township High School. Um, and as you know, I've been a guest with Dr. McKay for a couple of segments on his podcast. I am lucky enough to be here um, with, of course, Matt Shea helping us out and doing the very first superintendent spotlight. I'm really excited to bring this short segment to you throughout the school year. I'll be working with some students uh, and some faculty to talk about some of the really amazing things happening in Vernon that maybe you don't know that much about. So let me tell you how I got really excited about the robotics program. I was invited by some students in the robotics program and their advisors to come up here to Vernon High School and see what's going on. When I came for my first visit, I was informed by the students that they're actually working on a robot for Smokies. Uh, if you've had a chance to go into Smokies and have some pizza with your family, uh, you've seen that there's a hostess station there. It's my understanding that this robot is going to have some really unique and interesting responsibilities over at Smokies. So I'm going to ask Becca to talk a little bit about the robot at Smokies. Becca? Okay, so the robot at Smokies, we're, we've been 3D printing the robot. And, um, Okay. So 3D printing the robot, yeah. so what is that you have there? Okay, so hands? this is the head of the robot, or partially our first like design of the head. We're going to be reprinting it probably very soon. And this was done through our 3D printers here at school? No? No. Um, okay. no. It's with, uh, we have our mentor, Mr. Perringer, also okay. helped us a lot on this, because he's very good at 3D printing, and we've been printing in different types of, um, like, materials. Uh -huh. Like we pick different materials which pertain to whatever to certain circumstances process, right? we need to use. Okay. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about the robot? Okay, so our robot should be able to um, speak to other people as people pass to it, and then with the electronics, we're going to be making it so that the lights of the mouth will open, so it looks like the robot's actually talking Very to you cool. while it's speaking. And I believe we'll also be having some type of screen on the front of it. Yes, that's my understanding too. Yes. Yeah. For um, information. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think the premise was to create a robot that would interact with customers. Maybe while the hostess is seating other people, this robot would be there to greet people as they come into Smokies. And I'm so excited that our students are not only involved in amazing things, which uh, William, David, and Christian are gonna talk about in a minute, but they're also giving back to the community. I think it's really important. So William, why don't you talk about some of the other things that are going on up here in the robotics program? Yeah, so uh, I'm William, obviously. I'm the captain of the robotics team here. And right now, we're build, leading up to our build season where we compete in a comp, like build a robot and compete in competitions. So right now we're focusing more on recruitment of new team members and retention of them. So right now we're focusing on some smaller projects so that new kids can get, come in get and gain an understanding because most of the kids who come up don't really know a whole lot because they haven't had much experience with anything similar to this. I neither did I when I first started, so we're trying to like 
give them small tasks that they can accomplish and they learn a little new uh, bit of information of how to build a robot, several like components of like the design process into ro building robots. So it's a great step for new kids to come in and uh, understand like what the robotics team means and get really involved and interested into it. Like right now we're uh, kind of changing last year's robot for an upcoming small little like off-season competition where the students that are going to be helping change that robot are going to be able to drive it in competition so they get to see what ha they built and help design actually directly involved in our games and competition. I think that's great and one of the most important things is you know you're here and you've been here for quite some time but part of the longevity and the beauty of this program is the ability to recruit new members mm -hmm. and, and and this program has been in existence what 13 years or something? I think this is our Where am I going? 12th Okay, year? I was close. 2007 was our first. Okay, so you know it's been happening for quite some time and that doesn't happen you know by accident it happens by design with some of the outreach that you're doing to some of the incoming folks. David, why don't you talk yeah. a little bit more about so, some other things? As with many engineering endeavors, our robot costs a lot of money. I think last year uh, our robot cost around $3,500, so to get all that money we need to fundraise. And I mean not even the robot, the most expensive part is registration, which is $5,000 alone, and we get that money from the Department of Defense and Picatinny Arsenal. But other than that, we go out to local businesses and um, other larger companies that are interested in STEM and um, supporting other programs in the STEM area. And we ask for money. We do school fundraisers, like very soon there will be a Mario Kart tournament that we're going to do. And uh, yeah, so basically my job is to get all of that money and pull it in and distribute it among different parts of the robot robotics team, so some for the robot, some for registration, some to actually get to the competitions, and that's a big part of it because without it, we wouldn't be able to do anything. And then Christian helps a lot with getting out to sponsors through the website. Yes, and uh, uh, w one of the main concerns of uh, over the past year has been updating the website, revamping it, because as we all know, uh, everything goes through the internet these days. I mean, we're, we're doing this uh, very uh, video right now. Uh, so if we uh, improve the website and uh, make it more uh, interactive for uh, people and searchable, because uh, uh, finding on a search engine could be difficult if it isn't revamped. Uh, if we ha uh, have a good website and if we have an active YouTube channel in the future, then it'll be easier to have community outreach and uh, we could even uh, showcase some of the projects that we've done in the past in the future. Um, so that that's one of my goals at, uh, in revamping the website. That's a great idea. Can you share the uh, website for everybody who's watching? Uh, it's vernonrobotics.com. Uh, Check it out. There's a lot of really great information there, vernonrobotics.com. I just want to thank you guys for um, taking the time to speak with me. I will have to say that usually robotics has Fridays off, but these folks work really, really hard. They're here till all hours and on weekends. They put a lot of um, hard work into building robots and uh, really creating some amazing, amazing machines on behalf of uh, Vernon Township High School and our school district. So thanks so much for joining us on the Superintendent Spotlight.